Hi everyone. Today I'm going to share with you some ideas on how to evaluate an intervention or a program in social sciences. What is an intervention? An intervention could be a tool, a method, or a system that has been designed to manipulate um, certain variables or a particular variable. And usually the duration is shorter term. It could be a week, a month, or three months. On the other hand, a program is a series of activities that are designed to achieve some specific objectives and probably the duration will be medium or even longer term. For example, uh, the training program for teachers, um, the, the program for rehabilitation and so on. Okay, so that is an example of a, a program. Now, testing the effectiveness of an intervention or a program, there are two approaches. The first one is the before and after approach, or sometimes we just simply call it a pre-test or post-test, or in some cases, if you, it is possible, then you have pre-test, post-test, and retest. And uh, the other approach is called the process approach, where we look at input, process, output, or outcome, and the impact. The before and after approach, um, look at the intervention, okay? The intervention must be theoretically sound in order to bring changes to the variables that you want to measure in the pretest, post-test, or retest. And what I want to emphasize this is there must be a theory underpinning the intervention and the variables. In another word, you can't just create some intervention and just use it to measure some variables where there is no theoretical uh, foundation to these two. I'm sharing with you an example, a study that I have done. Um, I use a writing of weekly e-learning journals to assess the impact on students' self-regulated learning. I have a pre-test and post-test. Now, I have a theory that underpins the intervention um, that is the uh, e-learning journal and the variables that I want to measure, that is the self-regulated learning. So SRL theory, um, Zimmerman and Mellon actually has um, three components, okay, according to these two. Uh, self-regulated learning has three components, uh, forethought, performance, and self-reflection. Now, based on my literature review, it seems that self-reflection can or might be able to improve self-regulated learning. So therefore, I invented, I created a weekly e-learning journal for students to write and I want to measure whether this will actually help them to improve their self-regulated uh, learning because writing e-learning journal can actually help them to uh, better self-reflect themselves and through self-reflection, they are able to improve their self-regulated learning. All right, um, this article has been published and you can find uh, the link to this article in the description below. Now, the process approach to evaluation takes a little bit different view. You look at the process itself. In another word, input the processes or activities, outputs and outcome or impacts. Okay, um, Tools that used to evaluate program uh, would be the Kirkpatrick's uh, four-level evaluation model, the logic model, and a common one is the CIPP model, context, input, process, and product. Uh, model. Okay, so I will encourage all of you if you are interested to use the process approach, you need to uh, read up all these uh, models in order to understand um, the context that it can be used and the advantages and disadvantages. Now, one of the things that I want to emphasize is that uh, when you come to evaluation, the statistical, st uh, statistical tools that you need to use is actually looking at um, differences, okay? So you have to take note, okay, we are looking at causality, not correlation, not recreation. We are not looking at the relationship between two or more variables. We are also not looking at uh, what dependent variable can predict the independent, sorry, the independent variable predict the dependent variable. That means recreation. We are not looking at recreation, okay? Why? Because in evaluation research, you are looking at at least two sets of data or data collected at two different interval time. Okay, so therefore correlation and regression analysis is not applicable. You need to look at statistics, statistical tools that use 
um, two sets of data or more, for example, T-Test, ANOVA, and ANCOVA, and so on, okay? So this is very, very important. I do come across students um, who wants to do evaluation research, but actually they, are, they chose the wrong statistical tools. So please take note of this. Okay, lastly, the takeaways for today's uh, uh, sharing. Um, the first thing is, remember, theory is important, all right? When you create intervention, when you want to evaluate the program, all right, make sure there is a theory that you can use that underpins the variables and the program itself, because the theory will help you to interpret the results. Okay, why um, the result shows an increase or decrease? You must be able to use the theory to interpret the, this result. If you're not sure about the function of theory, you can check out my other videos about theory building and theory testing. The second thing that all of you must remember is that um, when you look at evaluation, the measurement is actually on the differences, not on the relationship between the variables. And the third point that you have to uh, bear in mind is that data needs to be collected at a minimum two different points of view, uh, different points of time, sorry, uh, pre-test, post-test, and if possible, you might want to look at retest, but of course, um, it might, it might uh, pose uh, more practical uh, problems if you look at retest. So the minimum is pre-test and post-test. Now, if you want to know more about how you can enhance the causality of the result, you can check out my other videos as well about uh, quasi-experimental uh, research on how to improve causality. Right, so this is what I have for all of you today. I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, if you think it's helpful for you, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.